What's up, everybody? Welcome to the King's Speech Podcast with Trevor and Josh, the podcast you can relate to, yes. learn from, and well, laugh at from two guys who realize the streets and the club only look fun on television now and Instagram. That's it. Those are the only two places. Um, every time you say that, I feel convicted. What do you mean? I'm like, was I in the streets? <laughs> <laughs> But it's only because Florida is like so open in comparison to um, okay. New York, so like it just looks like we're in the streets, but we're not in the streets. So I'm not in the streets to answer but your there's, question. There's more and, opportunities to be in the streets if you're like in LA or Florida or any place that's warm all year round. Yeah, oh, it's yeah, it's a no brainer. I've been selling Florida all week. Do you want do you want the pitch? I'm good. Okay, I'm good. cool. What's up, man? How you doing? How was your weekend? I'm good. I have a group of friends that have been trying to pitch me on LA. So, yeah, I'm good. L.A., man. <laughs> I can say a lot about L.A. L.A. is great, though. L.A. is great. That's good. I mean, I think about it now that I'm not single. I would never go out there single because I don't think I'd ever want to, like, Whoa, date anybody that was, like, you... raised and born in Los Angeles. So, yeah, I don't think I'd ever want to do that. You don't want to – I, I was in L.A. for – I was in – okay, quick story. I was in L.A. Mm -hmm. for two years. I was single for two years. Tough, 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 tough. <laughs> Here I am today, engaged, because I was like, okay, that was bad. I'm never going to... Copy I'm that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> how, was, uh, how was your weekend? Um, Any bouncy weekend, house action? No bouncy house. What did we Damn do this it. weekend, man? Weekend was cool. My sister was still in town. Awesome. Um, she extended her trip, which was dope. So we had some family over for Thanksgiving. It was Thanksgiving, dog. Yeah, that's um, right. I totally forgot. We didn't even like wish people a happy Thanksgiving. You know why? It's because Cuomo made y'all forget that Thanksgiving's a holiday. I remembered. I remembered Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone <laughs> from the King's Podcast. A whole week later. Um, what did you do? For Thanksgiving? Yeah. Uh, went over to my mom's. It was me, my mom, my grandparents. Uh, we had dinner, like small little dinner. Food was dope. I, I got leftovers, so many leftovers in my fridge right now, which is amazing. Um, and yeah, I'm that was the it. Leftovers. Really? Yeah, I did something stupid. What was that? So I was doing really good with like my meal portions on Thanksgiving, uh -huh. and then I did really good with like the way I was. I, I overthink the mixing of the meats, right? So like I'm like I Whoa. can't have. Yeah, pause. <laughs> <laughs> Overthinking the mixing of the meats is nuts. <laughs> <laughs> That's a clip. Great. Uh, no, so like, you know, like, all right, so my girl, she's um, Puerto Rican and Colombian. Uh -huh. So we had pernil, right? Okay. So it's like pernil, there's turkey, there's baked ziti with the ground beef. Ooh, so that's, that's a lot of meats mixing. <laughs> Trevor, Trevor. <laughs> what was that extra twang on that? That's a lot of meats mixing. Mixing. <laughs> mixing. Oh, um, boy. Yeah, so whenever, like, you ever been to, like, a Brazilian buffet? Yes. And they bring out the meats? Like, I actually, for whatever reason, I overthink that. I think there's no reason why I should be eating beef and turkey in the same bite. Like, that's weird to me. You would never do that. I would never mix the meats. <laughs> no, don't mix the meats. It's not Arby's. So basically, what I'm saying is um, I don't like mixing meats. So I was doing really well at like rice and turkey, rice and pernil, and then like mm -hmm. ziti by itself. Right? Mm -hmm. Like Then I did a stupid thing of pernil and ziti, and I just mentally just couldn't get past the, I couldn't get past the fact that I was eating so much pork. So how, how long did you stay in the bathroom? No, I've been good. Uh, oh. <laughs> what is your level of vulnerability today? I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, because after all that meat mixing, I definitely would have mixed up something else <laughs> in the bathroom Here's the after thing, right? Here's the thing. Everyone was meat mixing. <laughs> Everyone's been, like, so, like, if anyone was, has been listening to this entire, like, last two-minute rant about meat mixing, oh, don't boy. judge me because you probably were mixing meats. Oh, boy. I, I, I absolutely mixed some meats on Thanksgiving. There All was right, ham. Cool. My mom did a ham. There was turkey wings. Oh. Uh, there was, like, ground turkey in the ziti that she made. Uh, is, is that weird? Now, tell me, is mixing the meats weird? I don't think on holidays it's weird. I think it was, like, a Wednesday. No. <laughs> it's a little fucked up. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, like, for your body. You're a, health, you're a health guy. Talk to me about mixing meats. I don't really, I don't, I don't, I don't get on people about holidays. 
I think people should enjoy themselves and have and, and they have fun during the holidays. Okay. If that's uh, if your lifestyle is a healthy lifestyle, you'll be good. You can. You no, can, I'm not saying it's unhealthy. I'm just thinking yeah. about the fact that you're mixing meat. I mean, it's not ideal. You know, your body doesn't digest you know meat that well, especially when it's a lot of different meats inside of you. So that's that's kind of tough. Just, just, that's kind of okay. tough to digest. A lot All of right. All right. Thanks, multi- when multiple meats are inside of you, it's kind of tough. <laughs> so you probably want to stay away from that. <laughs> oh man, I just I just hope one day hey, I reach mom. a level of maturity. <laughs> what? I do. I hope one day I reach like an like an yeah. acceptable level of maturity. Me too. I am still grown kid. Sometimes I'm like, damn, I'm thirty. Actually, I saw a meme that read me. It was like at 28, um, my my parents were parents, right? And yeah. it's like at 28, I'm like, you can put everything in the air fryer, and I'm like, I'm the, <laughs> I'm the yeah, guy. Love- I love those memes where it's like, yeah, at, at 28, my dad had me. My mom was 30. My dad was 28. They had me. And then by the age of 35, they had, they had two kids. They had two kids and a mortgage. Yeah. You I know was, what I'm saying? I was, I was with a childhood friend yesterday. Him and I, like, we're 30 and 29 now. And mm-hmm. we're like, yo, at this age, like, our parents had kids that were, like, five yeah, you know I mean, like, I mean, they had they had literal human beings they were responsible for. We ain't responsible for shit. I'm not responsible. For, you know, I'm like, yo, I slept in a little bit today. Went exactly. to bed late last night. Like, watched the undoing. Like, drank a little extra whiskey. You know what I'm saying? You can't do that. when you have kids. You drink a lot of extra whiskey. You know, your kid ends up, you know, face down <laughs> in the toilet trying to drink the water like the dog. Like he sees the dog do. <laughs> yeah. So you got to just be aware of shit. Yeah. You have to be aware of all things. And we Absolutely. have no responsibilities. Shout out to no responsibilities. Shout out to all oh, those yes. who have responsibilities. Um, Amen. Good for y'all. For now. You know what I mean? For now. Indeed. Eventually, you know, those responsibilities will come to pass. But for right now, extra whiskey me, please. Um, extra coquito me, please. Oh, I'm, we're doing a thing. So speaking of coquito, because uh, one of the gym members, shout out to Victoria. She brought me coquito today. And I was very excited, but then I realized I'm doing this thing because uh, my girl and I were going to Costa Rica in a week. In about, wow. Yeah, in a little over a week. Que rico. We want to do the, uh, we're doing like this, so there's this thing called 75 hard, pause, where you, do, where you go 75 days of working out twice a day. You work out 45 minutes, uh, two times a day. And then you also, there's no alcohol. You choose a diet that's low in sugar, that's low in carbs. So no snacks for me this week. Um, wait, wait, wait. 75 days straight? 75 days straight, yeah. And you read 10, 10 pages out of a book every day. And you're doing that? For seven days. Okay. Salute, bro. Yeah. So until next week. All right. Monday. Okay. Okay. Salute. So tell the people what you're doing one more time. So this so, week, um, Trevor so will this be doing. Week, no alcohol, no sweets, uh, no unnecessary carbs, um, reading 10 pages of a book every day. And uh, two 45-minute workouts. One has to be indoor. One has to be outdoor. I'm going to tell you something right now. Tell it's me, raining. Tell me, tell me. It's raining like the apocalypse outside. <coughs> so that shit ain't happening today. Who, 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 who makes these rules? Um, I don't know where it was originated, but um, uh, the girl that I work with, Crystal, she is, she's like in the middle of it. She's like at day like 50. And she's been doing Salute it. Salute to Crystal because she's it's like It's hard. Killer. No, it's it, no, it's, it's, it is so difficult. Thanksgiving it is so was tough. on Thursday. We were, we were mixing yeah. meats and Crystal was working out one indoors and one and outdoors. And one outdoors. We were drinking Coquito. She was like, one that. Water. Oh, and you got to drink water. a gallon of water a day. That's that, Yo, when you drink a gallon of water a day, which you should be drinking a gallon of water every day, ladies and gentlemen, it is very good for you. You feel so good and fun. I'm sure you feel good. Um... Pee like a but, I got, but I got shit to do. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't spend all my time just like, you know, peeing. Hey, shout That's out to it. this cup. You see this cup? Oh, the Kobe cup. That's dope. Kobe cup. Where'd you get man. that from? Uh, Starbucks? To, no, Crystal. Crystal, my homegirl Crystal makes these cups. Which is oh, nice. Not a, I, I was plugging. I'm plugging, I think. That's good. Plug a business. Um, plug a business. But I actually also was next, just challenge also myself next to drink time. water. Also, next time you come across those things, send one to Queens. Okay. Okay. Just, just a, you know, you need a hint. cup? Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Plug and, yeah, set. No, we need cups. Yeah, we, Indeed. Yo, let's, let's grow this thing. Indeed. <laughs> absolutely. Let's go. All right. So, we're going to get started. Um, of course, we each hit you with our two topics to get started. Um, who went first last week? I went first or you went first? You went first last week. So, I'm I went first. Start them out. Knock so, them you out. got us this week. Let's get it. Um, there was a song back in the day. But it has nothing to do with this. Actually, it has everything to do with this. But Nate Robinson, mm-hmm. 
slam dunk champ. Two time, three time. I think it was three time. Three time slam dunk champ. Three time slam dunk champ. Yeah, Seattle five nine. superhero, five nine, mm-hmm. athletic, um, multiple sport athlete. I mean, what can I yep. say? Football, basketball, you name it, he got it. Thought he could box. Listen, I'm from, I'm not from the streets. I don't have hands. If I was from the streets and I had hands, I would think I had hands too. Sure. Okay? Mm-hmm. Some tall white kid. He's being like a little bit of a douche. He's, he's talking shit. Mm-hmm. I'm Nate Robinson. Y'all I'll beat your ass. I'm Nate Rob. I'm Nate Rob. Nate Rob. I'm beat your ass. Let's fight. But this kid got clout behind him. You know what I mean? So set it up. Set it up. You know what I mean? Like, let's, let's do this. Put it on the biggest stage. Mm-hmm. So Nate's like, yo, yeah, let's do that. I'm going to do it for my niggas. I'm going to do it for the NBA, for the hood, for, for Seattle. my mamas in them, for Seattle in them, for the athletes who could do different sports and people don't know. He wanted to do it for everybody, right? And all that's cool. But here's the thing. Here's my thing. Where are your real friends? Right? <laughs> Where are your, your friends who say, yo, my man, you never fought in a ring before. It's a little different. That's all you had to say. Boxing is different, and uh, yeah, it's not for everybody. It ain't for me. I know that. It's not for. It's not for me. It's, it's not, not for, for me. everybody. But but real friends would say, "Hey, big dog, I say you give it a couple. You know, you train for a good substantial amount of time. You get in the ring. You have a couple of fights. You do this shit before. You don't just step into the ring without any experience and get your ass knocked out on the ground." People's judgment changes when there's a bag attached, and I saw this. Um, I saw this this quote from uh, it was from Andrew Schultz. He's a comedian. I listen to some of his podcasts. He said, "People think because they can fight that they can box. People think because they're athletes, football, basketball, baseball, soccer, whatever, that they can fight. Like boxing is not a sport. Boxing is war. Boxing is a metaphor for war. Fighting is a metaphor for war. Like a basketball fighting. game is." A basketball game is not war. A football game is not war. A literal boxing, like keeping yourself alive, one person against Self one defense. person. Self-defense. Survival of the fittest. The yeah. truest. Last man standing. Yeah, yeah. In my opinion, thing. the truest form of survival of the fittest is in right. a boxing ring. If you don't have that well, mentality. Now is that, to me, it's now MMA, honestly, truly. I think it's still boxing. Really? I think it's still boxing because of like the historical foundation well, yes, of, histor- histor- of histor- boxing. I'm, I was just more so saying like MMA is crazy right now. Like it's it, it's wild, dangerous to me. But I do believe that boxing is the yeah. most historical for sure. Continue. I mean, it's the there's the thing is is like it's it's war, it's boxing, and it's UFC. Yeah. Like it's like it's like that's that's exactly what it is. Yeah. And Nate Robinson does not have a boxing history. Come Jake on. Paul does. So it doesn't matter if you're five nine and you're dunking on Dwight Howard. That does nothing for you in a boxing ring. Who have you number beat one, up? Who have you beat up? And number who one, you don't have the mentality of it being war. And number two, you don't have the skill. So it doesn't matter how tough you are. This like is anybody so could go in there against like the worst boxer. I had a high school English teacher that told me this story uh, about way back in the day. I'll never forget the story. It was back in the 70s. And he was at a bar. And he was with this woman. And this dude, this little dude had to be like 5'1", 5'1", 100 pounds, 105 pounds soaking wet. Came up to his girl, trying to flirt with his girl. Homeboy was tall. Homeboy was about my height. Told him like, yo, what the fuck are you doing? Get away from my girl. And he was like, I didn't know she was your girl. 5'1", is really small. It's really small. And that's that's how- small man. It's a small nigga. That's a disrespectful man. That's a disrespectfully short man. If a 5'1 nigga came up to me and I'm 5'9", I'm feeling, and you're talking to my girl with- Okay, continue. This yeah, is just so, homeboy, so homeboy is like, yo, I didn't know this was your girl. Relax. So homeboy's like, nah, I'm not going to relax. Fuck that. I'm going to fuck you up. All right, let's go to the back. Little man is like, let's go to the back. Let's work. My English, he's got his ass washed. Turns out homeboy was a featherweight Mexican boxing champion. That's not fair. They're not supposed to do that. They have license to kill. These are licensed. But are you calling the police when a 5-1 person beats you up? Who are you telling? Who are you telling that a 5-1 nigga beat you up? I'm, I'm te- he's a professional boxer. I'm telling. I'm not telling I'm te- anybody. Because anybody, nobody's you're gonna know he's good, a boxer just good, by looking good. at him. No, no, you're good. You're good. Nigga, this thing is a professional boxer. Google him. Uh, I mean, there was no Google back then. So that's why yeah, like, fast, you find fast, out fast. in hindsight that this is what this guy does for a living. So it's like, it doesn't matter how 
how big or strong or tough you think you are. Like boxers are warriors, yeah. and they and they practice as such. Like even sparring is like survival of the fittest. So I mean. Listen, I didn't watch any of these boxing matches over the weekend oh, because I just thought man. it was a I thought it was a ridiculous spectacle. Mike Tyson is old as shit. Roy Jones is old as shit. Nate Robinson is not a boxer. Jake Paul has boxing experience, but he's not a boxer. So I didn't see any entertainment in it. I didn't see the benefit in watching. Yo, memes okay, so were hilarious I, though. Let me give you so let me give you a, a, a side my side on, on this because uh -huh. here's what you were missing. Right for whatever reason, I'm in Florida now, so it's a little different. So I'm at a I'm at a restaurant, um, a sports bar that's showing you know socially distanced table mask, blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. That's showing the fights, and obviously there's a, you know it's 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 white people there and there's black people there, right? Mm -hmm. So the fight before this was like a white guy and a black guy, and like I was cool, whatever, it was fine, but for whatever reason. It was different when Nate Robinson was fighting Jake Paul because it was the douchebag white guy. And then, like, I felt like Nate was my cousin. <laughs> right. So I felt like, damn, like he got to put on like by default, like he can't get his ass beat by this white boy. So that's, that's the stance I'm on right now on national television. I'm, I'm here in the mixed crowd. I don't want to see Nate lose. I'm going to tell you right now, I know a lot of niggas that have gone out in these streets Seen a white boy they think it's for play play and getting knocked the fuck out. Yeah, don't sleep on the white boy. Don't, do, not, do not sleep on the white Do not sleep like, do you on... See, like, don't sleep I, on people because of how Don't they sleep look. on people in general. But in general. You got, it's like a certain type of white boy. Like that Jake Paul type, like that, that bro type. Yeah. Like, you know what they do for fun? They, they bro punch shit. each other in yeah, the yeah, dick. They, bro shit. Yeah, they yeah, punch yeah, each bro other shit. in the dick for fun. That's what white boys do. Yeah, yeah. They, they're trained. That's what they do. They punch each other in the dick. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, dude, Go. dude. Oh, that's what they do. <laughs> so you being guns. tough in front of them ain't gonna do shit to them because yeah. they get punched in the dick by their brothers as they grow up. It's. I, I have multiple questions for you on this because the male ego, right? Yeah. And then the willingness versus the willingness to want to do something different, right? So, like, my question for you is, if you're Nate Robinson, mm -hmm. are you on the stance of, I'm not letting this white boy beat me up, or I want to try boxing? I want to be, I want to, I want to be really good at boxing. Like, he wanted a bag. He wanted a bag, huh? He wanted a bag, and he wanted, he wanted social media to be on fire after he beat up. I don't think it had, from Nate Robinson's perspective, I don't think it had anything to do with him, like, beating this white boy's ass. I just think he wanted a bag. He probably prepped for it. He probably um, I did see like an opinion where if he, if Nate Rob was in the like in the shape that he needed to be in, like sparring wise, like you gotta we gotta like find a sparring partner and see what that was like. We gotta see if he was like timid, if he was hesitant, if he the didn't like get hit in the Reyes. face. I was so disappointed in Team Fucking Reyes displays of, of, of coaching ability. I would be but embarrassed we, to wear a Team Reyes thing. He got he got clobbered. We gotta understand something. Like the thing about war is like. No, who likes getting hit in the face? Most people don't. Most people don't like getting hit in the face. And and once some most people get hit in the face, what do they do? Party done. Grand opening, grand closing. Once you get hit in the face, you got to stand in there and get hit in the face multiple times. Multiple times. And Nate, You're ducking during jabs to the face. And during sparring, Nate probably got hit in the face a bunch of times and was just like, "This ain't for me." You could just tell. I saw from the highlights. He could just, in that ring. You could tell he was like, "This ain't for me." No, the first he got hit. hit in, he got hit in the face. This ain't for me. This ain't Yo, for, oh shit. On the this first hit, really he, ain't for me. Him, he was like, I don't want to do this. And he laid there and he contemplated. He was like, ah, should I get up? Should I get up? It was like seven seconds. Pride. Count. Pride and ego. That's why he, he got, got knocked up. out. The second hit, it was clear in his eyes, yo, Trev. Like you see in his eyes, I don't want to do this. I can't do this no more physically. That's why he didn't even see the last one hit coming. 99% of humanity does not want to get hit in the face. And once they do, it's a wrap. I just So it is what it is. I don't think I don't think Nate Robb really looks bad. He just he doesn't box and he tried to box. But I think here so my question I wrote down was do you look bad when you go on a Zoom and you say I'm doing it for the hood and I'm doing it for my kids and you don't do it? Does that make you look bad? Does it matter? 
It don't. It really doesn't matter. All right, cool. So moving on. Next topic. <laughs> so um, Roy, jo- Roy, jo- uh, uh, Roy Jones was the only man alive over the age of 50 who was brave enough to say, I want to take a hit for Mike Tyson. I know that you don't care too much about this fight, but here's what mm-hmm. I will say about this fight. I, someone who never really followed boxing, or these two really, but just heard of the tales of their greatness, appreciated mm-hmm. watching old heads still be crafty in or still be masters and crafty in their sport. Mm-hmm. It was dope. Yeah. Mike still go. You feel Absolutely. me? Absolutely. All eight rounds, he still went. Um, Roy was trying some new shit with the side punch. Um, so he was like looking at you like here, but punching like this. And so it was throwing me off a little bit. I don't know if that was like his old school move, but he looked good too. You know what I mean? And so like I appreciated watching these guys work. So I will yep. say that. That was Roy's thing though when he was, I mean, I followed a lot of Roy and a lot of Mike Tyson okay, when I was okay. a kid. A whole lot. And Roy Jones, at one point, Roy Jones was the best boxer in the world for okay. an extended period of time. Like he would win okay. fights. He was flashy. The whole like side punch thing you just described, like he would yeah. like he would put his hands down, get in your face, shit like that. It was all really that exciting. That side punch is his, that's, that's his signature move. I don't, I don't, I've never seen the side okay. punch from him before. That's probably some new shit. It's, 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 it's more so, it's more, it's more so, it looks more like this. I'm facing you. I can't show like the you like the Pat Mahomes like no hood like no yes, look pass like a little that. patty a little patty yeah I get I get I get that it was probably some flat he was just a flashy guy and he was really talented and I think with those guys like you never lose the as far as like the, the intelligence it's like a good like a good coach like Magic will never forget all the all the basketball he knows he might not be able to do what he did physically twenty five years ago but he'll never forget how to do it and I think with those guys they don't forget how to do it like for me I just, like I said I just I was just not interested in it these guys are old. And it's not even just the fact that they're old. Like I, I don't want to see that. I don't think they need that. I don't. They I don't want to see it, former, it was a, it former was, greats out there just like. Uh, it's not. It wasn't. It for wasn't. Me. It wasn't. It wasn't a wash. It. I, I'll tell you that. It wasn't. It wasn't like because I was under the impression that it was going to be like wash. It wasn't like wash. It was really like. It, it didn't swinging. look wash. When they're Mike, both washed, no. it don't look washed. It only look washed if they're playing. If they're going up against somebody that ain't washed. Nah, if I, I mean, go out, if I go out right now and find somebody that hasn't played basketball in six months like I haven't, and we go one on one, it's gonna look it's gonna be a slug match. It's no, gonna be some it's, it's gonna be some legendary shit. Let me go find Imani Bates right now and say, hey, let's go one on one. Nah, I'm gonna look washed. <laughs> we'll all look washed. I won't get a, I won't get a shot off. It's listen, man. They look good for their age. I, eh, I, rel- I think we, I think I think we kill, I think we kill, I think we killed them. Um, and I'm trying to do more of appreciating what we have when we got it. I mean, I appreciate it when we had it. Roy Jones re- should have. Re- yeah, you I mean, Roy old, Jones, bro, you old. This is for me, man. I, but Roy, me, Roy bro. Jones for like it's boxed for, for too long. He just recently retired, like a few years ago. Yeah, 2018. After getting, I was, I was shook. after getting knocked out like ten straight times. So like. I, so I, for me, that's my last memories of Roy Jones Jr. Got it. You're, I you're, remember you're old. You're, you're scoring. I remember the the greatness of him, but he should have retired earlier. It, like. There's no boxer that retires when they should. Um, There's none, except for Floyd. Floyd. And he's a dickhead, so it is what and it Jake is. And Jake Paul wants to fight him. Uh, I could see that being close. Yeah, well, Floyd will have to put on a clinic for the hood. Like, someone actually has to redeem us. Why? Who is not? Nah, listen, Jake Paul boxes. It has nothing to do with the hood or representing or whatever. He boxes. <laughs> If He's Nate a very Robinson athletic guy. For, okay, but here's what I'm saying, right? Nate Robinson, no one wanted it to be for the hood. Nate Robinson said it was for the hood, and now the hood lost it. We need it back. We need Out it of back. all the people I could think of that I would actually say, hey, like, hey, like, he really puts on for the hood. Nate Robinson isn't that guy. He <laughs> said, <laughs> you got I'm just saying. Oh. He can, what if I, if I go out there right now and was like, yo, this is for the hood? If I go out right now and it's like, yo, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna run this six minute mile. This is for the hood. Who's gonna give a fuck? But that's because you're Big Trev. <laughs> I said nobody's yeah, gonna care. Nobody can't. No, the hood is fine. The hood is to... great after Nate Ruby and Robinson get We're knocked not, out. We'll get killed. The hood is great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. The hood yo, is okay. Those are my those are my two topics. I wanted to <laughs> touch on Nate. The I hood has never been better. <laughs> <laughs> Hood is thriving. <laughs> thriving, my nigga. Oh, man. The uh, hood is so good right now. What do, you, what, do you, <laughs> what do you got for us this week? All right. So my first topic, it's it's the same topic, but it's two different stories, right? So uh, <laughs> Vanderbilt College football. Sarah Fuller 
first woman to, I guess, like kick in an SEC game, a Power Five conference. Uh, Vanderbilt is in. Uh, keep in mind, Vanderbilt has not won a game all season, and in the game that Sarah Fuller kicked in, they lost forty-one to nothing. Um, did you see the kick? I, I did see the kick. So I was on Instagram and I'm and I'm scrolling. And I'm thinking the whole when I first I'll give you guys my opinion Yo, when I did first you saw the, the story. Kick that made first. history. The what? Did you see oh, the, the, the world, the, the world, world. record breaking, gender defining kick. That little squib shit she kicked. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm scrolling down and I'm th- they they have a video of the kick and I'm like, oh this. I was like, at least she's gonna be able to kick off. Like she's a soccer star. Like I'm she's gonna kick this shit booming out the back of the end zone. And it's gonna be miraculous. People are gonna yeah. be proud of her. She kicks it, and the shit, like, skip. You know how you feel like rocks on a lake, and the rock skips? Skip, 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 skip. That was a kick. It wasn't okay. a squib. It wasn't an onside. It was... Straight ahead, just squib, whatever. Cool, got it. And then the team scores no points. So it's like, were they, were they in positions to kick field goals, and they just didn't, and they just went for it on fourth down? I'm all about... And then, oh, so I want to, like, because I got to give context, right? So the okay. Cleveland Browns... <laughs> The Cleveland Browns, right? Question. They have um, – they started Callie Brownson, who is their chief of staff, chief of football staff. And because of a um, – I guess like another coach being out, she was the tight ends coach on Sunday. Super proud of her. Super amazing. That, like, that I feel to like, me I feel is like that is, that is legendary shit. That to shit. me is groundbreaking. I feel like female football coaches and then even uh, the Miami big. Marlins – they have a female GM, an Asian female that GM. That is that is also amazing, groundbreaking. Because, re- because when it comes to mental co- mental capacity, there is no difference. Was actually there is a huge difference between men and women. Women got more of it. <laughs> There's no, a huge that, difference. I mean, women I got mean. more of it. So I, I have so much confidence in a woman's ability to learn the game of football, learn the game, and, teach and, the game, and coach teach the game it to, to players. Better than same a coach. thing with baseball. Same thing with basketball. Same thing with any sport, business, whatever. Groundbreaking, but. A woman has no place on a football field with men. In the men's league, in the in the men's football league, in the men NCAA men's Division One men's ba- football program, a woman men. has no place on the football field with men. For safety purposes. For safety purposes, primarily. Like if, if it was, you and I think ha- that's why the kick was the that. way that it was. Was because if it was a long kick and there was a return, she would have to tackle somebody. She would have got blocked. She would have got her head knocked off of her shoulders. It's and just it, a physical. It's not a. It's not a sexist thing. It's a physic. It's a physicality thing. I, this is so layered, man. And I and I wanted to come off in the right way, but I feel like there's no way for this to come off in the right way. No, we but, have come off in the right way. This is the right. This is the right thing. This is the right thing. I feel like this. Is I right told you thing. before we started. My daughter is not playing Division One men's football. I want to know what's the need. I want to know what is the need to do that. Uh, to prove that, to prove uh, to prove worth, and to prove that worth, that they're good enough, but and, you, and, I, but, and I and I and I get it, but I get it, but you don't have to do that. You don't have to. You don't have to do that. I don't need that. Val- I don't need, need you to to validate that for me. I don't need that for me to understand that women are just as good at anything a man can do. I know that. What's the plan moving forward now? Because it's so groundbreaking. Are we going to have co-ed NCAA Division One men and women's football? No, we're not going to do that. But I, I and I get listen. I, I get the sim. Hold on a second. I'm going to restart the, the thing. The shutter. The shutter needs to be reset because I don't understand what the plan is for after this. It's just like what, 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 what. I feel like the I feel like the plan is. And I listen. I I, I get it. I understand what the messaging is. A little girl can do anything a guy can do. But we got to but we got to stop putting so much energy and so yeah, much we're value it too far now. We're in it this far. in a sport that people play because it's just a sport it's cool like yo we wasn't even like here's the thing I, it's been on my heart bro okay here's the thing for some reason women make it seem like we don't want to include them on football because they're women that's I mean, not that's, the case no, no that is the case <laughs> that is the case. But it's most guys beca- don't want don't want female coaches. Most guys don't no, want female no, GMs. No, no, not even. But like, forget that. On the field to play with me, it's not because like, yo, like, we don't think you're good. Like, it's just not that. It's we just have this thing. No, they're not as good as 
There's no, 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 but listen, but like, it's, it's not even that. It's just like, yo, we just got this thing that we're doing with the fellas. It's just all the guys, we're just going to get together and all the bros are just going to have fun and kick the football, throw the football, tackle each other. It's just the guys, two hours, three hours, let us have that. We can't have saying, that. Are you saying that women don't want us to have fun? Clearly, she doesn't. <laughs> Come on, man. This is a prime example of not wanting men to have fun. Because now I can't run at full speed because you're on the field and I can't hit you as hard as I, as I need to to get to the other person. Because, but we're having this thing. It's just the guys on Saturdays. We like to get together. They wear red. We wear blue. We throw the, we throw the football. We just we throw it back and forth and we tackle each other and we like that. And then after we get beers with the girls. I want us to understand that? that our messaging is purely that I'm sorry, man. Women can do anything. You could, you could, but let us Except have football. Play football with men. Nah, That's it. Let us have some more things, man. Give us some more things. Now, it's not even about letting us have stuff. Like it's from like a pure like safety and like health perspective. Because you're gonna get your head knocked off your shoulders. Yo, they did. If a you want to play movie. real deal football, you're gonna get your head knocked off your right, shoulders. Right. There's a movie about concussions and and the damage of CTE. Will no, Smith they're not gonna be concussed. They're gonna die. And and, and but but on what you hill have somebody to prove what to me? What do you? You proving? have somebody you like have to do that. You could have just Khalil Mack or Von Miller coming at you 100 miles an hour, and they're gonna. And the thing is, and and the game becomes not the game because. Most guys aren't going to want to tackle a woman. Oh, man. Hold on. Yeah, hold on. I just, I, just, I just got more revelation, right? And the niggas, and the niggas that do are going to be looked at as scumbags because guess what you are if you tackle a woman? A motherfucking scumbag. Our entire life as young youths, good fathers, good mothers, good parents say, hey, don't hit girls. Don't hit girls. That's all they tell us. You know what I'm saying? We learned this, this thing. So now you want to get on the field in the sport where it's the number one contact sport in America, I have to hit you. It's part of the game. You're I have to hit girl. you to stop you. I have to literally knock you down to the ground to stop you. And but, but my entire life I've been conditioned to when I see you to literally stop myself from the physical things I want to do. But those are the two ends of the spectrum of the guys that would be on the football field with a woman or the guys that are, that are scumbags and will think to themselves, I don't want her on the field. I'm going to knock her out. And the guys that are like, yo. I can't. What points do I get? Tackling Susie. And and Susie wants you to tackle her for you to prove, bro. For Susie to prove something that doesn't need to be proven. Doesn't need to be proven, Susie. We good. We're and listen, good. like I. We just want to play football. I, Me and listen, my friends I, versus Trevor and his friends. I get wanting to, to do something groundbreaking, wanting to make history. I get it. I totally understand it. But not every grounds for breaking. But I also think you got to look at, like if. Like, does, does Sarah Fuller really want to play football the way that it's really played? Or did she just want to kick something and say, I played in a, in a Vanderbilt men's football game where they're 0 a 1,000, they lost 41 to nothing, and I got this little kickoff. Like, is, it, is, is, is the moment... Is that what you want your memorable moment to be, though? Is the moment more important than video? the game? Because at that point to her, I feel like the moment is more important than the game. Because, like, you play – what do you play? You play to win the game. That's what you – you don't yeah. – like, you play the game to try to win. No. And it's like it's you're not – It's about you. It's about clout. It's about being the first, being the first. And the it's history selfish. of the family. It's selfish. And people have selfish motives. And we're not going to say that. We're not allowed to say that because she's a woman. And, no, that's not – like, I'm called spade a spade, dog. Like, dog, you didn't have to break that ground. It's 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 I I think selfish. It was selfish for guys for guys, guys like us. Like and you didn't kick more than ten yards. For guys like us, like we don't need to see a woman on a football field to know a woman's worth. Baby, baby girl. I know so you're worth. I know you know I and and that whole the whole thing is like maybe hey maybe Sarah Fuller used to date a football player, and maybe she was tired of him going out and having fun without her, and like many women around the world, you're a man having fun without you. Ugh, not who not a good look for you. So she was like, fuck but it, why? I'm gonna kick some shit. I'm gonna kick some shit. I'm gonna, some I'm gonna shit. pop up on this nigga. Lil, what up? I'm kicking. I'm kicking. I have Three a question points, for you. Nigga. I have a question for you. Yeah. You are Sarah Fuller's boyfriend. Mm hmm. Okay. Yep. And you are, you know, second string um, 
QB. So uh -huh. one of your jobs is to be the place kicker. The holder. Uh, place holder yeah. for the kicker. Are you, are you holding that for Sarah for her moment? Absolutely. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. That's my you, girl, yeah. I know, but you're not going to... But here's a better question. You're not going to pull your girl to the side and be like, yo, this is stupid? Nope. Okay. <laughs> All right, cool. cool. Is this your first time in a relationship? <laughs> I'm not doing that shit. <laughs> Crazy. I'm going to ride that shit to the wheels fall off. Oh, baby, damn. Kick it, kick it, kick they it. Don't want, they don't want you back for the next game? Oh, man, they fucked up. Yo, we some suckers. I saw a meme that exposed this actually the other day. <laughs> it was extremely graphic <laughs> and uh, accurate. But yeah, yeah I, men are some suckers, I'm, man. Shout out to Sarah I'm, Fuller, I guess. All that to shout say. To shout to Sarah Fuller. <laughs> shout to Sarah Fuller. You know, I, I, we feel how we feel about it. You know, you know how we groundbreaking. Feel. It's Tell whatever. Y'all you know what it is, ladies. You know what it is. Is love. We believe in your capabilities, and just, just not this one. No, not in not in the capability of playing football with men. Yeah, no, nah. not in the men's league. I right, so next topic. Um, Dave Chappelle is back in the news. And uh, Chappelle's show premiered on HBO Max and Netflix a few weeks ago, and I watched it <laughs> again because it's fucking hilarious. Uh, and then he and put then, out. Then he got yelled at. And then, in, what are you talking about? <laughs> no, by Dave Chappelle. Oh, Dave Chappelle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. He yelled. He called me and yelled he at me. Called, he, called his, he called everyone and said, "Yo, hey, yo, 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 come here, come here, come here. What are you doing? Relax." Um, he stop revealed on a on an IGTV special that <clears throat> he wasn't getting paid for uh, these re-airings of Chappelle's show, which is fucked up, which is extremely fucked up. It is his art. It's his inte intellectual property. However, the contract he signed with Comedy Central way back in the day doesn't give him, the right. I guess, like financial compensation <clears throat> when it's replayed, just based off the, con off the contract that he signed. And he actively wants people to boycott watching Chappelle's show. And I'm conflicted. When it comes you know, to this stuff. You know, because, as you were breaking this, I, I, uh -huh. I knew your stance already. Really? I knew that you weren't I knew that you weren't on board fully with, with boycotting. It Absolutely is, not. Yeah, I, I, it didn't sound like it. And, no. and and I'm I'm almost right there with you. Continue. I'm conflicted because I consider myself a creator. Mm -hmm. I consider us, you know, creative. Mm-hmm. And um, I wouldn't want my work and the stuff that I put time, blood, sweat, tears into to, you know, benefit somebody else financially and not me. Right. So I get that. I understand that. For sure. But I also understand life is life and life is about contracts. And even if a, if a contract's fucked up, you should change it. I, I, I totally believe that. But I'm also a fan. And I think Dave Chappelle is hilarious. And I think Chappelle's show, when you watch it now, you understand so much of that shit you cannot do today on television. Like, you can't yeah. do the nigger family, like, on television. You yeah, can't yeah, do the yeah. piss on you video on television right now. And he was doing that yeah. every single week on Comedy Central. Pioneer, and it was hilarious. Pioneer. And it was groundbreaking. And it was dope. And it was him. It was, it was, it was Chappelle, right? So I feel like if I feel like watching the Chappelle show, I'm going to watch it. You know, but I, I do understand where he's coming from, and he and Netflix should take it down because Netflix is partnered with Chappelle. Hey man, here's here's what I'll say. It's okay, bro, bro. Dave, Dave, Dave ain't going no thing. <laughs> Cause I was thinking about the same shit the other day, right? Uh huh. <laughs> because I was like, I didn't grow up watching Dave Chappelle, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, because you know, conservative Christian home, Dave Chappelle was just <laughs> the devil. <laughs> so, um. <laughs> Wasn't able to uh, really, I missed that part of the childhood. So for me, mm -hmm. it was going to be really dope to kind of like circle back on that. And so then like I saw like all like my friends who are creatives, like post yeah. this in stance with, with Dave. And I mean, listen, man, I was thinking about it and I was like, ah, oh, do I, what do I do? Do I just wait till he gets his? And I'm like, ah, I am one in a billion. And to be completely honest. That's an ugly face, but that's how I feel. To be completely honest, also, we talk about, we listen to these different, like, media outlets and these people that are at a certain level of clout, right? Like, Chappelle is at a different, in a different stratosphere yeah. in the compensation he demands for his performance, for his appearance, for his, uh, for his talent. Not everybody's there. Yeah, actually. Chappelle can turn down deals. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. Take the deal. Sign the contract. 
and get to the place where you are, Chappelle, to the point where people actually think your work is good enough to want to profit from and screw you out of it. Right. Because at that point, you don't need that. Big so fan. we can't, like, I'm not going to be here and be like, I stand in solidarity because me and Dave Chappelle have so much in common. Yeah, honestly, Dave, here's And so much say. I can relate to. No, I no, don't. No. no, Dave, here's the truth, but big dog, listen, I hear you. Um, I think that whole contract thing is shitty, right? But I got some real problems going on, and I would love to laugh. So I'm going to watch the fucking Chappelle <laughs> show, okay? And thank you very much, and I hope everything goes well. But you have millions. So as you send out the IGTV blast, like, it's okay. And I get your fight, and I respect your fight. But I got to get these laughs, bro, because it was a rough day. And that's I how under, I feel. Like, and and, and beyond, I even, beyond even the money, because Dave Chappelle's value is not in his wealth. It's in his talent. And his talent it. I love it, is un-like. It's undeniable, right? His storytelling is dope. His storytelling is legendary storytelling at this point in time. Because, because He's I, grown and transitioned into what he is now. And that's dope. And I love it. Can I share something with you? Yeah. So I, because I, like comedy and me and, and I, interesting relationship, right? Like I'm not like a, kind of we're going to touch on Kevin Hart in a little bit, which is a perfect segue. Wow. Bow. So anyway, I kind of struggle with like, Feeling forced to laugh because it's comedy. I like to mm -hmm. just sit down and appreciate what the fuck is going on. As someone who wants to be in entertainment, I like looking at the art. So mm -hmm. what I really appreciate about Dave Chappelle is that the way he tells stories are very low pressure for laughing. Like you don't, it's going to be funny. You don't have to wait for the punch. It's just, yeah. like he's just, he's just so good that it's not like, do I laugh now? Like, it's just like, yo, if you find that shit funny, it's funny. If it's not, it's not. But something will stick. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm just telling you this really funny story. And I, I just love it. I, I watched it. I think, you know, his his messaging was great. Um, I think his fight is is the fight that for all creatives. Um, but it's a lesson not all. for all. Not for all, but I think it's a lesson for all creatives. Creatives on his level. Creatives on not his level. Not all creatives. Take I that think, deal. Niggas, take that deal. Sign that contract. Trev, Trev. You're not Dave Chappelle. You're not. I'm just going to be real. You're you not Dave take, Chappelle. You can't, you can't, I think he's not saying, you can't just take every deal though. When one, when you have, no, you can. If one person wants you, if one person says, hey, sign this contract for a year, I'm going to pay you shit, I'm going to pay you $100,000 for a year. But after this, you know, you get, this is your residual and this is what the company gets. Let's say, you, and you're not, you're negotiating against yourself if nobody else wants your services or your talent. And that's what most creatives are in the are in the place of now. Most creatives see, that posted that video, contract. no, most creatives that posted that video, I stand in solidarity with Dave Chappelle. Don't have people fighting over them like people fight over Dave Chappelle's services or talent. Take the fucking deal. And Trevor. use your talent and your confidence, just like Dave Chappelle did, to increase your value to the point where that's not a deal you have to take anymore. I do agree. I do agree to a certain extent. I, I do agree, but I, I do also believe that you shouldn't um, just take anything. No, you shouldn't. You know, and, but, and I, th and I think that's... And I think you that's should take something. No, you should take something. <laughs> I think you should take something. I think you should know your worth. I think you should know your value. I think you yes. should know what you bring to the table. I think you should stand for what, you, like, is true to your messaging, too. Like, you don't want to just compromise it's just cool to know your. It's cool to know your value, but your value is what you're being paid. Your value is what you're being offered. That's what your value is. I can know my value. I can know I have great content. I can know our videos look good. I can know our quality is dope. And I'm, and I'm, and, and I'm comfortable in knowing that. And I'm also comforting, comfortable in knowing that not many people might not value, like, might value this the way that I do. And I'm cool with that. I'm confident, I'm confident in my talent and my ability. So I'm cool with that. Right. But your value is what people offer you and what you get paid. That's it. It's a real black and white thing. The nuance comes in the confidence you have in your content, the confidence that gives you the energy to get up and go even though you might not be compensated or compensated what you feel like you should be. But you still put your art out and you still put 100% into it because that's just who you are as a person. That's where the real value comes. And that's what's more important than what people value you as. Right. So that's the comfort I have in doing this. 
So I can't stand in solidarity with Dave Chappelle or Joe Budden or anybody else who's out here turning down deals. I can't because I'm not in their position. I'd yeah. love to be in their position one day, but I'm not there right now. So I got to speak from my perspective of being a fan. I respect that. That's it. I respect that. I'm with you. I'm with you on that. We're definitely not in their boat. Not in the boat. Now it's okay. The, hey, but when the deal comes, make sure I see that contract because I am not. <laughs> you better make sure I got my vacation time in there. Like, you better make sure I get the check. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, I mean, right. let's, like, of course, you don't, let's, like, just like you don't take any job. Yeah, You don't for just sure. take any offer. For you know sure. what I'm saying? Smart, that's, that's just, man. Be smart, that's just man. real life shit. Absolutely. For sure. Be smart, but also understand, like, just because you follow these niggas on Instagram or listen to them frequently, you're not in the same position. You are not fighting the same fight. It's you can not get there, the same. You, can get there, you absolutely can, but it's it's not different the levels. same. Very different, different levels. levels. All right. Speaking of funny, talk to me about Kevin Hart. Yeah. Uh, did you? I mean, I didn't finish. I'm not going to finish. I mean, I don't think you should. I don't think it's worth your time. That's just me. Wait, we spoke um, about him though. Did we not speak about him? We spoke about if you saw the special. We spoke about him like two oh, or three Oh, we want to talk about Kevin Hart in the chatty house. In the in the in the clubhouse. Yes. In Clubhouse. Um, so in Kevin Hart's new special, No Fucks Given, he makes a joke about the possibility that his daughter could be a hoe because she's talking to multiple guys. Uh, people in the app Clubhouse did not like this. They thought it was very derogatory towards the black woman. And they didn't like that that type of, uh, that type of I guess, vocabulary referring to his daughter. Kevin Hart fought and said, I did not call my daughter a hoe. I said it was hoe-like. And... Um, that he called three former hoes. He was joking, I guess. I called three former hoes I know and asked them, is this whole like activity? Stop with the false narratives and clickbait and the back and forth. Um, I got I got thoughts on this. What are yours? What are yours? All right. My first thought is I am honestly tired of people's sensitivity. I really can't I, I can't stomach it anymore. It's just annoying. Mm-hmm. He's a comedian. It is his daughter who gives a flying, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I just feel like it's just like, yo, like, just let it bump. Like, why do we have to say anything? That's my first thought. Second thought is Kevin Hart. Why the, f why do you care? Why do you care? Is the, uh, you feel me? Everyone quick, cares his, too much. And that's what's going to be annoyed. His special was called No Fucks Given, but he's giving a whole lot of fucks so many i get it yo i get it because like yo we do a podcast right so like all right let's put it in like real day terms we do a podcast like we put out content right like sometimes you have to not give a fuck of how you sound and how you look how it may come off we just said some crazy things that may come off as misogynistic who knows but honestly we meant something in good faith but somebody might receive it in a different way because this climate's so sensitive right but why do people care? I, why does Kevin Hart feel the need to 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 to, to, to defend what he said? Oh, fam, you got the jokes off. You're, the name of your special is No Fucks Given. Give no fucks, cuz. Give no fucks. Uh, so my thoughts. First off, I feel like if the joke was funnier, people wouldn't care. I watched the special, and when he started, when he lined up the joke, I knew what the punchline was gonna be. I knew the punchline was gonna be your daughter might be a hoe. Yeah. After talking to all, to all these different guys. I knew it. I knew it was coming. I chuckled. Ha. Huh. That was one of my eight laughs. Ha. Huh. Are you telling me that you have comedic timing? I I, I don't have comedic timing. <laughs> I don't have comedic timing. Nigga's, I just know when I, I just... It was sound like a comic I connoisseur just, over here. I knew. I mean, I watched a lot of comedy. Line. No, I know you did. I know you did. Um, and uh, you just tell where it was going. So it wasn't as funny because there was no real, I guess, like surprise or shock or awe. And even throughout the special, it just seems like he gave a lot of fucks, even though the special's name was No Fucks Given. He said some wild shit, but it wasn't anything like beyond the realm of like what you expect Kevin Hart to say. He was a cartoon bunny, for God's sakes. Like, how many fucks could he not give, right? Yeah, he so, sold himself to Hollywood. I, I feel like if the joke was funnier, people wouldn't care because they would be too busy laughing. But we got so much time to not laugh at this yeah. unfunny joke that we can be critical of it, right? And then the second thing is... Why are you responding? Just like you said, why are you responding? If it's called no fucks given, then literally my nigga don't give a fuck. Can I tell you and just stand on your stand on your stage and tell your joke and be confident in it. 
And I think this is the thing with Kevin Hart. Like he's Sensitive. he's not funny anymore. He's not funny. I like, I love him though. That's my guy, but but he's not funny anymore. And like the thing is, but like it's because people are just letting him. <sighs> no, oh. the thing is, is like Kevin Hart has never lived on the edge as far as his comedy goes. He talks about his family. And that's cool. And another thing, I think people are overly sensitive because people were really, really invested in Kevin Hart and with that whole like cheating thing and sex tape and all that drama and him not taking accountability and that special that he put out last year that we talked about also. People are sensitive when he talks about these things now. People think, wow, you're talking crazy about your wife, but you were just like fucking bitches and storing coke in a hotel room. Wow, you're talking crazy about your baby mama, but you cheated on her just like you cheated on your other wife. So I think people, even when I was watching that with uh, with my girl, that's those are things that she was saying. She was like, he thinks this is funny. When he did this to his wife and his ex-wife and his kids might have a complex and he's joking about. I think people are taking him seriously because he put his shit out there to be this type of person. He turned out to be something else. Now he's this edgy guy and he's never been edgy. It's just confusing. We don't know who Kevin Hart is anymore and the worst part about it is that he's not even funny anymore. Yeah, if he was funny, we wouldn't give a fuck. The same. Chris Rock is hilarious. We don't give a fuck. Dave Chappelle is hilarious. We don't give a fuck. They say watch all the time, all the but time. It's, funny. it's funny. It's funny. And his shit isn't funny. That's all it is to me. I'm with you. That's it. Just be funny again, my nigga, and you'll be good. <laughs> That's it. Find that funny. We're on board. Exactly. Um, um, yeah, man, it's tough, man. It's tough. Only because, like, it's it's hard for me because, like, Kevin Hart was somebody I really, like, wanted to model my career after. Not in the comedy sense, but, like, in the successful sense. Mm -hmm. And I just hate the way he gives it up. I think you still... Because pers His I business think we gotta, sense is like, great. His business sense is great. Yeah. But, like, I, I, but, like the responding back like i don't like that from you i don't like that i want you to i want you to give no fucks you told you, me you give no fucks i want you to to show me he might have that tory lanes complex little niggas man where he's trying to be six where he's like with the women and the cheating and the and i guess like the no fucks and i'm a tough and i'm edgy i don't know maybe i'm I don't off know. I don't know. but Not just get back all all of these problems get solved if you're funny <laughs> all nah. of them it's like, a, it's like being an NBA player. Like Charles Barkley was throwing people out of bar windows and getting in fights and cursing at people. But he was putting up 20 and 12 every night. So guess what? 20 and 12 We're going to let it slide because you good. <laughs> you real good. Yeah, I like so we're going to let it slide. MJ was in casinos till 4 a.m. gambling. Fucking bitches left and right. 30 a night, six rings. You good. You're great. If Kevin Hart is funny, everything is fine. But he ain't funny. Yeah. So it is what it is. Yeah. I'm with you on that, man. Kev. Indeed. One more for me, buddy. Yeah. And then the next special he's going to come out with is like, oh, now I'll give you even less fucks. Nah, my nigga. Yeah. All right, guys. So next up, we got our social slash relationship topic for the day, for the week. We've got five ways social media causes relationship problems. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, there's way more than five ways, but we're going to give you the best five. And we've touched on these a bunch of times uh, in the course of our art and our show. Um, but we're going to go through a few of them. A few of them. Um, first, the first one that we talked about a little bit uh, more frequently in the past, online infidelity, micro-cheating, a, a term coined by the King's Speech Podcast, <laughs> trademark 2020, <laughs> Trevor and Josh. Um, online infidelity. So that could take the form of DMs, of course. You know, um, you know, the face with the hearts in it, hearts itself, kissy faces, peach emojis, the dreaded eggplant. All of that could be seen as online infidelity. The lick. The lick. Why did you just do that? <laughs> <laughs> the lick, in case you didn't know what it was and needed to see Josh do it. The lick. <laughs> A few other, uh, few other subtle hints that you might be um, <laughs> micro-cheating. <laughs> but yeah, online infidelity is, is definitely a thing. Um, just be careful. Get out the DMs. I don't want anybody in mine. And you're good. Uh, second, uh, it's a leaving that one. <laughs> uh, it's a romance killer. One in ten couples admits checking their phones during sex. This Who is the fuck crazy. Is checking their phone this during is, sex. That was the craziest one to me. <laughs> Yo, um, we might square up. 
Who is checking their phone during text? We might have to square up. I honestly, I just, I would feel like a, like a little, I would like get in the fetal position. It's like you feel like you got the time right now to check your phone, like mid stroke. No. no, Trevor. Tr- Trevor, <laughs> I'm crazy. Phones. <laughs> yeah, no one, that's that. That's, we that's, would that's, never have a phone ever again. No one will have a phone in the house. No one will have a phone. That's Generation Z. That's Generation Z yeah. checking their phones, Snapchat. checking TikTok, Snapchatting. Uh, they probably uh, don't even like sex, sex anymore. Don't leave that know. alone. Anyway, next <laughs> relationship comparisons. <laughs> that can't be true. That thing is just horny. <laughs> They're horny toads. Um, you know, them generation Z be wilding. They're like, "Oh my god, it's my girlfriend. I love her so much." I'm like, "Dude, you're 14." <laughs> <laughs> And relax. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to tell you a story after the show is done because I feel like the people that tell the story about watch this. Um, <laughs> so, so next uh, next up, relationship comparisons. Social media makes it easy to compare your relationship to someone else's. I, I'm, I, I feel like this is 100% true. Every time you see that couple you know, smiling and laughing and all this stuff, filters on filters. How come? How come? How come? Right before that. How come? They were screaming at each other. Yeah. Yeah. You ever seen that, uh, the Hurt Bay, Hurt Bay YouTube video? Of course. I, mean, who does? I bet you they had some fly-ass photos. Oh, they, they probably look really good. They had some fly-ass photos. Those light, bright niggas had some fly-ass photos. Yeah, Absolutely. Crazy. Yeah, don't compare yourself. Don't compare your relationships to anybody else's. And it's very easy. Honestly, like it's easy to compare your own individual life to someone else on social media. Yeah. Let alone your relationship. I think it's just, it's very easy to fall into that trap of like, look at so-and-so. How do they have so much so-and-so? And And, oh my God, what did they do to get that? And this and that. And why can't Mm -hmm. I have? And why can't I look? And like, honestly, like, I won't lie to you. I struggle with that shit. You know what I do sometimes? Put the fucking phone down. I mean, you got to. You, know you got to if you, if you had the point where you're comparing if, stuff. Like, not if you're comparing, but if, you, if you're even just seeing yourself, like, looking like, not even comparing. Because it's very, like, comparing, I feel like it's, like, a very strong word for it. Some people like to compare. But if you're just, like, even sitting there, like, I guess comparing is the only word really for it. It's you know that, I think that's the, that's the, that's that's the, the worst thing about it. it. But when you're doing yeah. that. When you're, when you're trying to measure up what you have versus what somebody else has, what you do and you and your couple have versus what somebody else is doing, That's you don't the know the for story, disaster. man. Huh? No you, don't, no, you don't know the story behind the photo, behind the relationship, behind whatever. So it's, it's, it's ridiculous to assume that everything's you And know, if perfect. you do know the story, then you should be fucking applauding it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You know what I mean? So like, like it goes two ways. It's either you don't know the story, so who cares? Or you know the story and you're like, yo, this is dope. That this is at great. This, at, the, at this point, you know what I mean? I feel like it goes two ways, and if we just stop spewing out all that, I wish, I wish, I wish. I think one of the things also is, like, sometimes people look at, um, like, different relationships online, and they think, oh, why doesn't my girl dress like that? Why doesn't my nigga dress like that? Why doesn't he do this or she do that? Uh, and it's no like, broken. no, don't do that. First of all, like, if you're comparing, you really want your girl, like, dressing like Lil' Kim at the MTV Awards? I don't. Yo, okay, so... You're going to hate me, man. Uh-huh. I think we should close with this. <laughs> Unless we have more topics. <laughs> what's on your mind? Well, we could do, what's the, uh, the, so the last two are keeps the past alive. Social media users often follow exes and stuff like that. Oh, you got to unfollow. Then also, I'm a big unfollower. I like to purge out my, my unfollows. Yeah, yeah. And then damages empathy. Um, a brain scan revealed that multitaskers, people who like to like be on social media and do things at the same time, multitaskers have less empathy which is a key ingredient for a relationship. So yes. what was on your mind? What, to- what topic did you um, want to broach? No, uh, so I missed a very important time period of hip-hop, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, the first hip-hop video I ever saw in my life was More Money, More Problems, Biggie Smalls, right? Okay. Um, right, because that's when they're like, they're like kids? Nope. <sighs> That's nope. the sky's the limit video. No, 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 not that one. No, 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 no. Okay, so it doesn't even matter. Sky's uh, the limit is when they're kids. So definitely not sky's the limit. Sky's the limit is probably like one of the first. Okay, sky's the limit the first video I saw, and then Mo Money More Problems was the first hip hop song. Like I can remember myself knowing this is Mo Money More Problems. Okay. Okay. And then when I saw Sky's the Limit as a video, I'm like, oh, these are the depictions of the kids 
whatever. Okay, so mm-hmm. what I'm trying to say is that I missed a very big point in Junction. Yes, it is evident. It is evident. This is how <laughs> evident it is, right? Uh huh. Little Kim. Yes. Not light skin. No, she's not always been the complexion she is right now. Not even no. close. No, she's not always had the face she has right now. Actually, Little Kim, not the same person today that she was back in, in the- 96. I miss yeah. Little Kim's 1996 face. Okay, yo, it's two different faces, right? Absolutely. Okay, cool. I'm not crazy. But no. I did miss that because like I never like knew, okay, that's Lil Kim. So like So you thought I, that was just always Lil Kim? No, I knew she had work done, I knew she had surgery, I knew she like I just didn't think that she was a dark skinned sister. Well, I mean she, well, she had a bunch of surgeries. I don't I mean, she got her face done, nose done, lips done, tits done, ass done, dot all got all that. The first thing she got was the tits done, and then I thought, okay, fine, boom, this is a nice little upgrade. Dope. Then she started fucking with her face and was just like, nah, you wild. Yeah, you man, you yeah. already cute. It's very, it's very unfortunate to see that. Um, but I didn't know that. And I really missed out on a couple of different things. So that is my tidbit for today. Things Joshua missed out on uh, from his childhood. Dave Chappelle. Um, who, who, and, can you, who can you name from the Wu-Tang Clan? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for liking and subscribing. <laughs> I, don't need you to, um, I don't need you to name all of them. Just name one or two. One or two members of the Wu-Tang Clan. Raekwon. Yes. Okay. Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> name, name another one. Name one more member of the Wu-Tang. The RZA. Okay. Okay! The RZA. That's just the inspected at Method Man. Uh, all right. That's all I got for you, man. Come on, man. ODB. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Don't what was, what was, what was Illmatic's? What was, sorry. Hot oh, damn. I just gave nice. away the answer. Nice. What was, uh, what was Jay-Z's first album called? Oh, I don't know, man. Come on. <sighs> Reasonable doubt. Okay, okay, okay. Reasonable doubt. Okay. okay. All right. Biggie's first album. Come on. Trevor, when I tell you that from from 1990 to 2008, I cannot really tell you much about hip hop. I think that's why you like Drake so much. I tried to tell you this. Because I don't think you know any better when it comes to hip-hop. Besides you, you can slow down, though. I'm but, just... I'm, but that is a fact. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's, what, that's what it is. That's what it is. Because Cause, uh, I'm used to this sound, right? So like now you want uh-huh. me to go back to, to Biggie, and I'm hearing Boom Bap. I don't have a love and appreciation for Boom Bap because it doesn't bring me back. I have appreciation for... I've been my too strong out on confidence. Oh, I'm so confident. You can, re- you can recite the, the songs to like... <laughs> what is the name of that song? Headlines? That's headlines. Newspaper Lines? Headlines. That was New York headlines. Times? I, I oh, just headlines. gave you headlines. And, that, and that's like to me, that's when hip-hop was at its peak. Y'all really want to flip over this table. <laughs> You're wild. <laughs> Yo, I can, I can tell you where I was when Headlines was coming out. I was running my first basketball camp with my, with my homie. Shout out to Drew. Shout out to Webby. We were running a St. John's basketball camp in Long Island. And Drake dropped Headlines. And we were like, what the hell is you this? You couldn't control yourself. I was speeding. <laughs> On the Southern State Highway, like, ba 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 That's what you speed to is headlines. I didn't give a fucking Yo, are you kidding me? They know, they know, they know. Yeah, they know. Got the realest on the right. I'm mad that's what you speed to is headlines. What do you speed to? Boom bap? Huh? What do you speed to? Uh, Money, power, respect. Locks and low cam. Oh, hard hip hop. I speed to been around the world. I I speed been to, around. Oh, that's a good. That's a good bop. Ooh. No, the original, not the remix. The original, the original, that's, not the remix. I've just... been around. I don't like the remix that much. Uh, what else do I speed to? I speed to politics as usual. I speed to uh, uh, life's a bitch. Nas and Az. I speed to all the Nas and Az collabs. Those are fire. Those are aggressive speeding songs. I, That's why I speed. Headlines. Headlines is not a speeding song. Uh, headlines. Headlines is not. Oh, let me get. In, let me get into the HOV lane. <laughs> that's what. That's what headlines is. Headlines is. I am dipping out. I am cruising on the southern state. 
at 70 just dipping in you dipping listen, in his headlines let me tell you what your little out. boom bap is right <laughs> driving behind niggas and, and swerving off and cutting that's that's type of that's type of I do I, I love to cut a nigga See, off in traffic I, I love I it I could read you I all that, that, that that aggressive hip hop put on some Drake you cruise like a certified lover boy yeah you miss a lot of hip hop anyway uh, our, our last our, our last two <laughs> Our last two uh, stories um, that we'll touch on, just sports stuff. Sports, sports, sports. <laughs> um, that's how we get to sports. That's how we get to sports. Uh, Lou Williams. I thought this was interesting. The Clippers are thinking about trading Lou Williams. How do you feel about that? You think that helps them, hurts them, puts them in, his, in a position to win? If y'all feel that I need to do that, go ahead. I, 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 like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think you have bigger issues to figure out. That's my like, person. Yep. Yeah. Is Paul George hurt or no? Does Kawhi Leonard like basketball or no? Does Kawhi Leonard and Paul George fit? Let's figure that shit out first, right? I think because I do know that I have a six man on roster that I do know that he gives me 20, right? So mm-hmm. do I have room for two superstars and a six man who gives me 20? I need to get him 20. Can I afford to give him 20 when my superstars can't figure it out? I don't know. So maybe Lou's not the fit for us today. I don't think Lou is the fit because uh, he doesn't give you anything defensively. So I mean, man, you I, take listen, Trevor. Let me tell you something about let me tell you something about defense. You take that shit and you go that way with that. Okay, we're not looking to Lou for straps. No, but you got to find somebody that will that will buckle down in the playoffs. I mean, they couldn't stop anybody. Jamal Murray was running circles around everybody. Everyone, everyone, Kawhi, everyone including who Including Kawhi Leonard. Everyone who played, everyone who played Jamal Murray got eight and alive. Don't do that. That's not fair to Lou. Not, not everybody. Everyone. Braun included. Everyone. Mm-mm. When Braun put the clamps down, when they oh played that God. team defense against him, and then they got Jokic team in foul defense, trouble. Team but defense. But individuals, individually, no one could guard that man. Individuals who don't know how to play defense play pretty bad team defense. No, no, no. Trevor, 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 don't do this right now. Don't do what? One on one, people who are guarding Jamal can, if, if. Well, nobody can guard anybody one on one anymore. Okay. So, I'm then, just, don't, I'm so just, then don't tell me that Lou Williams doesn't play defense then. He doesn't. So that doesn't matter. I'm not then. talking about one on one defense. I'm just talking so about defensively. Matter, then. If like, no one plays defense, no period. one doesn't matter if Lou Williams doesn't play defense. No, some people play defense. Lou Williams just doesn't. But doesn't you just said that defense. no one plays defense anymore, so it doesn't matter if Lou No, I said nobody can stop anybody one on one. The rules and people's skill level has risen so much to a, to a, to a level where it is you need damn help. near impossible to stop yeah. somebody one on one. So you need help, where, and you need that help to be effective and smart. And Lou Williams isn't effective or smart on defense. Where do you send Lou to today, right now? Sixers. That's cool. That works for the Sixers. They need that perimeter scoring. They have That's a lot of cool. defense. That's on cool. Uh, yeah. You, so done. What up? Sign the contract. But who do you lose? If you're the Sixers, yeah, Tobias Harris again. You just they're just they're nah, just rotating. Ain't nobody taking that Tobias Harris contract. Nobody's taking that shit. That nigga's making a thousand million dollars a year. Has a house on the moon. Sweet. Nobody's taking that shit. Um, but it's just interesting. Next story that I saw that was really interesting. Uh, back to college football. The Minnesota football team had forty people test positive for COVID in ten days. That means you were literally trying to catch COVID. That means everybody was in the locker room licking each other in the face. For you to catch COVID. Literally tongue to cheek. You know who didn't get catch COVID in the locker room with the fellas? Ooh. Sarah, Sarah Fuller. Fuller. <laughs> Shout to you, Sarah. Look at I you with the comedic timing. <laughs> I, I just think that, uh, I just think as Americans, I was telling my girl, we're just very arrogant. Like, we don't give a fuck. Like, there's a virus infecting people, 250,000 people a day. And we still got to get our football games off. We still got to get our baseball, our basketball games off. We still got to put people in stadiums. We got all these players and these coaches catching this shit. Cam Newton ain't the same since he had COVID. Like, don't blame it. We on just COVID. don't give Cam, a. F- we Cam just is, don't Cam give is a, a fuck. motherfucking disappointment. But it's not really Cam's fault. But Cam's a disappointment. But it's not Cam's fault. He is. But I mean, people just we're just arrogant. So we don't give a fuck. This vet, this virus is killing people. Like, we got a quarter of a million people dead. That has no, like, resonation or effect on people. We just got to play our sports, got to roll our ball out and do what comes natural, even though a bunch of shit is happening that ain't natural. 
So all but these I niggas mean, that caught COVID. Me. Those guys, some of them want to be there. We saw it happen with the bubble. The guys wanted to play basketball. They wanted to entertain. This is their livelihood. So it's hard to be like, yo, like, we're arrogant. Like, these guys are going to work. Why is work? it? But so many other people aren't. So many other people I can't. Mean, so, why, so why is it? So what special place does the athlete hold in our society where, number one, we got to risk we got to risk their life to this virus and their family's life to this virus. And number two, they seemed so valuable to be on television that they just got to be there. Listen, with, and, and with nothing, everything just going on sense. business as usual. It, nothing, it doesn't make any sense. The way I'm we value you. people in this country, in this world, is so fucked up. But it's the same it's thing we were talking about. It's like, the way we're conditioned, though. It's the way we're conditioned. We're conditioned to think that we need entertainment. And as an athlete, I'm conditioned that I need to perform. I mean, Everyone's conditioned. We only to work this role. to be entertained, right? Like we don't, we don't work hard and get degrees and get jobs. We get that all so that we can be entertained, so we can pay for entertainment and convenience. And some. Other I don't think things. it goes deeper than that. And some other huh? things. And some other things. I mean, what it, all the things that we get come down to convenience and being entertained. Or, and being stimulated, and I'll put stimulation under entertainment. That's all it really boils down to is nothing deeper. What deeper meeting are we really looking for when we like go degrees or get a job? Even if that job is our passion, even if it's what we love to do every single day, we know that we're getting resources out of it to keep us entertained, stimulated, and convenient. It goes back to what we said about respectfully Sarah Fuller. It's, it's the problem with all of us. We're just selfish. Yeah. We're not arrogant. We're selfish. We want to do things that we want to do. We want to do things. We want to see things that we want to see. We want everything that we want it now. It's just, it's just the human nature, really and truly. That's what it comes down to. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, we just want more. I think before COVID, it could be considered selfish, but I feel like the, the brazen attitude and will that we go out and still do these like activities that we probably shouldn't be doing leads to that being the arrogance. arrogant. I am, I'm with you. Ah. Yeah. So, I don't know. We got deep for a second. We got deep. We got deep. Bring it back. 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 Instagram. 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 Bring it back. <laughs> bring it back. 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 Yeah. Well, Indeed. listen, man. Yeah, I need your sound. If you're ever <laughs> on the highway and you're doing 65, 70... And it's a nice New York City day, and you would put the windows down and bump some tunes. Try out Drake, headlines. Let me know how it goes. Just don't knock it till you try it, bro. Leave you with that. I'm on, I, I have to go out to train again tonight, so when I get in my car later, I'm going to put on headlines. And I'm going to see what kind of energy I get. <laughs> and I'm going to report back. To, in fact, no, I'll report back to the people next week. About the energy I had on the cross island blasting headlines. I've See what happens. Blasting headlines on the cross blasting island. Blasting headlines on the cross island. So many times. I've blasted so many times on the, on the cross island. Oh my on gosh. On the cross island, on the southern state, on Sunrise Highway, in Florida. You're going to blast that shit as soon as we're done. Nah, not today. Today's not the headline. <laughs> today. <laughs> today ain't the day. I was listening to Take Care last night. So I already heard headlines. <laughs> Take care is not a bad album. I'll give you that. Thanks, man. Hip hop historian. It's not a bad I'm album. Hip hop historian for drink. <laughs> Hip hop historian with your Take Care takes. <laughs> I can tell you where I was. <laughs> Hip hop. You can tell me where you was when Take Care dropped. I can't. Can you know what? You know what's all that's gonna matter when my kids, when my kids are talking to me about music. All that's gonna matter. Where were you when Drake dropped headlines, boy? The fuck no. Bo your yeah. kids are not going to ask you, where were you when Drake dropped headlines? Want to put money? <laughs> and what do you think we're going to listen to on the family road trip? Dad, 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 I was in school, and, you know, Mike was telling me about Drake. Where were you when headlines dropped? <laughs> well, son. Well, well son. son. First of all, <laughs> when I heard that beat go, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to go. We're going to go. <laughs> Yo, Kim is going to be in the corner like, what is wrong with She's this like, nigga? Kim is... 
also a Drake fan. She's going to be like, I might be too shy. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Go. I feel like my, I feel like my kids are gonna just like be Wu Tang and Jay Z and Biggie and Redman fans, and I'm cool with that. And of course, all my soul music. Your kids are gonna all love my, uh, Trippy Red. Uh, Atl- uh, Atlanta's finest. Trippy Red is L- Atlanta's Lil finest. Little boat, little boat. Come on, little yachty. Come on, this is what your kids gonna love. They're gonna love Wale. Hate, Wale. Hate. They're gonna like Wale. Fuck with some. Fuck with some Wale. Um, Absolutely. They're gonna they're gonna hit you for the new I don't hate Yachty though. I don't hate Yachty's music. I think he has he has some pretty What's his song? I don't, da, 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 da. You like That's that? probably one I don't like. You like that one? <laughs> but I like I like a few of them. I don't think he's trash. I think he's really talented. He writes a lot of stuff also. I got no beef. Yeah. But um I, we're gonna have to have like a hip hop episode where you just like learn some things. Well, I gotta give you I'll give you hip hop homework. I, I don't want I, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Hip hop to me is just like vegetables. I, I, I'm gonna I be real. Eat, I haven't. I will eat the ones I like. I'm gonna be real. I probably went through like a two week period of not listening to any hip hop just because like all the rappers that were being murdered and the violence and the music and oh. me being just like emotional about it. So I would just only listen to R and B and soul music. But that's just me. I listen to the Marvin Gaye's oh, and the well, T Murray's. Yeah, and I'm the, an R and B. I'm not an R and B historian. You, you don't even want to know who my R and B great is. <laughs> Who's your R and B great? Jeremiah. Nah, come on, no disrespect. Come on. Who's your RB great? Yo, we gotta we no, I can't even say it on this podcast because Why not? we've said too much. And the women aren't happy. We gotta go. <laughs> what are you talking about? Who's not happy? The women. Who's your who's your we can just close out. Who's your who's your who's your R and B? If I said it, the Person. women wouldn't be happy. Who was it, R. Kelly? No, come on, I'm not a perv. So then who is it? Can't be anybody that damaging. Ah, Christopher Brown. Uh. Yeah, yeah, you see what you did? You fucked me. <laughs> no, not really. The ladies love Chris Brown. They do, but they but 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 a lot of them don't. How most, of them do. <laughs> most of yeah, them do. Most of them. A lot of them do. Yeah. Evidence suggests a lot of them do. Honestly, evidence suggests you know what? Before we even enter into that next topic, I'm gonna just shout out to the ladies. <laughs> evidence suggests a lot of women love Chris Brown. 100%. Regardless of what his history is. Still, to this day. Absolutely. Women are still having his children. And he's still stalking a few of those baby moms, but, you know, who you know, who cares? Well, you got to make sure they're doing the right thing with the kids, right? No? <laughs> you don't believe in a little stalking, a little you action? I do, I do not believe in any type of stalking. <laughs> okay, listen, I know next week it will be a one week late, but we, I would love, I would love to recap on the undoing. Yeah, we have to. I'm on episode four right now. Oh, you only got two more. Oh, it's, oh, it's six. It's only six episodes. Oh, we could have. Okay, yeah. I promise you we had all intentions of catching up on Saturday night and Sunday uh-huh. morning to watch for the season finale on Sunday night. Mm-hmm. When we got home, we both fell asleep on that couch. We put on episode three and just knocked out. Cooked, yeah. washed. It's Saturday it's night. so... Washed. It's only six episodes, but so much is covered. Like it's just, it's so oh good. man, it's so fucking good. I'm, I'm every in- single second. Like yo, you'll you'll watch episode six, my nigga. That whole episode is is like a master. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. We to are, me, episode we're... to me episode five was a little slow, but episode six. Mm, can't wait. Can't wait to recap. Number number four. Number four right now. What are you up to? Right now, the last thing I've really seen was um, the dad went to the school and let niggas know he's no bitch. Yes. Okay. Right? And then mom yeah. fainted. Donald Southern is And then yeah. why did why did he go to Fernando's house? Why did Jonathan go to Fernando's house? You're not allowed to do that as the number one suspect in a, in a murder in a murder. After episode six, you'll see why. After episode six, I can deep dive into like who he has, who he is go. as a person. I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta go. After episode six, after you watch that, we can deep dive all of that, all of the motherfuckers. After at like who all of them really are at the core, because it's about the show's about good and evil. 
It's a, it's a mystery about that. good and evil. That. Did you, okay, ooh, did you watch The Boys? Absolutely. Yo, so I didn't finish The Boys. I'm on season two. I'm on like, one of the later episodes. Uh huh. It hit me hard when I realized that The Boys is about racism. In a sense. A did little you, bit more you that? than that. A little bit more than that, yes. But like yeah. the premise, the whole premise of Stormfront. Well, Stormfront, yes. Yeah, Stormfront was a Nazi. Her, exactly. And I was like, yo, like yeah. to me, I thought that was just fascinating because that's not my first time in watching superhero because Captain America, same guy, kind of like concepts, right? Are you not a well, superhero guy? He, um, I'm the superhero guy. Mom, the Marvel. I'm the Marvel. Isn't isn't, the that, isn't that a common thing though? Like Pete, like like they like to just show that heroes combating Germans trying to take over. Yeah, yeah. Captain America was in World War II and right, killed, right, right, right. going against Hitler and Hydra. And I find that shit Red so Skull. fascinating when you when it's modern day superheroes. I think it's so crazy. Because I think that's the it's it's good versus evil. It's yeah. like you know this is the the antithesis of good, and this is like the antithesis of evil. And we have to defeat them. You know what I'm saying? Even if it's a comic book, we got to inspire each other to defeat evil. Especially it's political too. Like, you know, it's politics as well. Like, there's Superman episode, there's a Superman comic where if they paint the picture of like what would happen if he landed in Russia as opposed to landing in the United States and the differences in who he would be if he was, you know, um, a Russian born Black citizen. Black and Black. yeah, so it is. Crazy. We've already talked, we've talked way too much today. So. We're going to get out of here. First thing we're going to recap when we come back next week, The Undooming. So if you're not watching it, make sure you watch it. So you And we will, so many spoilers. And you will not get one alert. Next <laughs> week, you should have more than enough time. There's only six episodes. I'll be, I'll be yeah, caught up. Yeah. If, if you're not caught up by now, she. Absolutely. Indeed. All right, guys. So for Josh, it's Trev. We out. Thank you guys for listening. Hit the socials. Hit the YouTube. Share every video you like, guys. Share, leave comments, engage with us. We'll engage back. Peace out.